Okay, so um, and Laura is is Laura Lowry and Laura <clears throat> one and the same. La- Laura. Is, um, really suffering, struggling with her, some disabilities and some illness right now. So we're so happy to have her with us. And we just never know from day to day. She's on a liquid diet and she's we're just kind of supporting her as she supported me all through my cancer and held up the school while I was gone. And we just talked about we're just a couple of hot messes. So <laughs> we're here for each other. And I so I um, it too. So lovely to have you here. So just chime in, you know, when you hear something. Uh, We're going to start with introductions. Uh, First, let me show you an overview. If you look at the front, um, this is going to be a presentation welcoming people to Learn It Town. And if you want to see the size of Learn It Town, it's quite compact. Uh, it's really small, and we really like it that way. It's very manageable, and um, we figured if we could make this little school a success, maybe we could make a little bigger school a success. But first, we're going to check this out. It's a labor of love, and if no matter what, we report here every day, and we love it so much. I don't know why. Laura just built a really beautiful city, and... Um, people love it and we just feel at home here and we've got everything we need so now we're going to do some introductions just so you get to know who we are and we're going to start with Anna introducing herself and she's had a really exciting couple of years so uh, first of all let's do a sound check Um, is everybody hearing me okay and let me know if there are any problems at all and the same with Anna when she begins speaking just let us know if there are any issues we'll just stop and fix okay Anna take over and introduce yourself okay well nice to meet you all and thank you for coming Uh, my name is Ana Gemma Gallego I'm from Spain I'm I'm a human resources um, and I also was a learner of English a long time ago. Uh, so one of the things that I really, I think I, I, I put into Learning Tongue is uh, being the experience of how you join Learning Town or how you join a second life to learn a new language that in, it wasn't working. In, for example, with, in, my, in my experience, it wasn't working going through a physical academy or having um, teachers in my home or going abroad because I went to London. Nothing was working until I found um, Second Life at that time was Language Lab and um, I learned English it's so easily. So I basically fell in love with the methodology with the teachers and, and everything and now I am lucky to be part of Learning Town with Laurie and with Eva that are really great partners. We also, um, in Gandia, where I live, we also get into an incubator that was a, a selection of different women. Um, and um, and they did like interview and they were telling about the different, what we, they wanted to know about the different um, businesses we, we have. Uh, so we got selected. And it's the first uh, 21, it was like more than 100 interviews and we got into the first 20s. We did a three to four, I think it was almost four months of um, a course and different things. Um, we studied Lean Startup and it was really, really great that every step that Lean Startup was saying is everything that we were doing at that time. We got... Um, um, the improvement of every single teachers, they all were so impressed with our project, the economist and different person. And also the director of the um, European Center for Women and Technology. Um, after we did the project to Dame, uh, they were so impressed with us, so they asked her, I mean, asked us to go to Lisbon to 
to the ICT event, uh, which is in an European technological um, event. They asked us to be part of the pitch uh, contest, and we get second. So it wasn't a bad position. We really, um, I think it's, it's something good because uh, I got really good connections there. I could do a lot of networking. And thanks to that, they were so impressed, and we have been now invited to the next Web Summit, which is a international uh, event that will take place in Lisbon next November. And I am also a soccer, a soccer player. I am I'm a professional. I cannot say really professional, but that's um, uh, part of what I do is be part of Learner Town and also to be um, try to to jump. Um, I try to how can I say that uh, work with my two passions uh, that are English uh, teaching and I mean teaching English or teaching Spanish too and uh, soccer. And I don't know if, uh, if you want me to say anything else. No, but I just am so impressed because um, Anna's kind of our best foot forward in the public and she's really getting out there. And the fact that um, they accepted her into this woman's incubator and not only did they accept her, but they just adored her project. Or they loved the Learn It Town project and just uh, gave her lots of positive feedback. And we didn't know. We were just doing what we could afford to do, called Lean Startup or whatever. But we were lean because we're lean. And <laughs> yeah. um, <laughs> you know, it came naturally to us. And so we just got a lot of great information and especially how the lean startup really works and what it really means and I was with a, uh, a, a web company for women we were doing women's financial uh, education and blew through three million dollars and we did the old model where you you know you do your less um, less when you do your uh, business plan and you get everything all mapped out and then you go out and you get money and then you Oh, you make your product, you open your doors, and then the money just goes away, <laughs> unless you have a revenue stream. <laughs> so <laughs> I was really convinced. I don't think I want to go through that again <laughs> with this. No, so please. let's just keep it small. We often use the idea of fractals. Uh, once we have a perfect little fractal, then we can multiply. But until we have that fractal, and people have offered us money, and we just uh, aren't ready. Our fractal's not quite ready yet. So we're just trying to find a way we can support our students and bring in more students. Okay, so let's move on. Um, I'm just going to introduce myself quickly. Um, I am Shawn Corrigan, and I work at the University of San Francisco where I have been for 15 years and before that I was an art director with the web company because I had left teaching in 1994 and gone to work in the digital world so it was a lot of fun but then we had a dot com, dot com bomb and um, I just started working at the university immediately and that's where I stayed. I have a master's in digital media and learning, which they've now changed to DTTL, which is much more complicated, and I don't even really know what it stands for. <laughs> I forget. Um, and I have a master's degree in linguistics. So I started teaching many, many, many years ago, and I was always interested in um, media, using media in the classroom, even when we had these big Betamax machines and these hulky cameras, we were doing commercials and um, playing around. We've always played with music. And so playing has been a big part of um, my teaching activities. They're not really games. They're just activities where people enjoy themselves. Um, and I am currently working with graduate students in our uh, the University of San Francisco Matisse program. And so they, I'm kind of the filter they have to run through. They become digitally literate with me. I teach a digital literacy course. And in that way, they're able to go on and complete their 
a master's degree using their digital knowledge and often they know more than their professors. So they leave my class with about eight to ten new skills that they can actively use and we focus on free software. Um, okay, so let yeah, yeah say, I've got a words. What? Let me Sorry. say <laughs> that you also are so creative, you're so hardworking and you're always thinking new ways. You, I mean your mind can stop thinking and creating new things yeah. and, I, and I love that from you. Thank so you. you. Yeah, obsessive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I could use a few more hours of sleep every night, but that's okay. It's kind of thing. <laughs> okay. All right. Now I'm going to introduce Laura. Now, Laura, is there anything you'd like to say about yourself before I launch into your... Uh, just that I've been doing this for a long time. That's since uh, I was, I, I worked as a as a behavior modification counselor for 15 years and I got, uh, I have MS and was sick. And so I was laying in bed and I was taking a class online and this was 2006, a, a photography class where I was just taking pictures around my room and they did it in, it was a uh, Texas State Technical Institute and they had a second life class that they were trying. And so I came in and uh, I was like, wow, that's that's kind of interesting. Uh, we didn't have uh, uh, we didn't have voice at that time. You just put your pictures on a prim and people saw them and it was kind of a way to get people together. And um, since I was in bed, it was one way. And then I met the folks at Language Lab that they just got a $2 million grant from King's College to try to do something. They had no idea what they were doing. And they said, hey, come help us. And I said, okay. And uh, so that's what we did. And we had, uh, so I was the uh, community director. I did everything in the world to kind of, because I hadn't, I mean, I was in bed. I had nowhere to go. So I just kind of learned from a lot of mistakes. Teachers came and we tried different things. We brought in 63,000 students, or I brought in with that. Um, I don't know how many, that was That was three or four years ago that I got that off the database. Uh, I kept from all over the country, from uh, from 96 different countries. And it was, it was quite, um, it, 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 quite, it is very amazing. And what I found is that we made a lot of mistakes and we did a lot of really good things. And so I have seen what works and what doesn't work. And, um, and it's quite phenomenal. Learning by doing is very important, but there also has to be some direction to it. And that's where showing the, you, you can't be fixed and unmoving. And uh, you have to use synergy and show one who is um, so flexible and so quick thinking. And Tita, the, the, the information we, re we got from Anna was, uh, I say Tita, Anna, that's the same person, from starting, <laughs> from starting from beginning to end uh, is just, it was, you, you couldn't ask for something better, a better study. And so to have her a part of the team and have Shawin as part of the team is just amazing. And I think I'm going out. So Shawin, go ahead. Okay, <laughs> perfect. Guys. Perfect segue. Because I wanted to kind of go into our history because that involves a little bit of more about Laura and who Lowry Mills is. Um, because she went to Language Lab and um, she was just, her footprint was everywhere. And I learned this when I went to work. Heike took me over there when they were hiring and introduced me. And I was just thrilled. I would have paid them. <laughs> I would have paid tuition. Um, but they were paying, you know, marginal sums. We, what did Barbara McQueen say? It's a, it's a, uh, a little stipend. <laughs> so, um, but it, I just learned so much from Laura, and she was so patient. She taught so many of us how to do things. And she was never very well, and we all knew that, so we kind of worked with her. But, you know, after a while working at Language Lab, I just, my experience was, where is Language Lab? And because I knew it was a company, but the only 
thing I saw was Laura and what Laura did. And I said, wait a minute, Laura's language lab, because they just worked her like a horse and she worked like a horse and she just produced a whole community. She created community involvement, activities. She ran big events. She had this kind of multi-level um, way students could come in and participate. Um, and I, honest to God, never knew what London did. So I feel language Lowry equals Lowry Mills equals Laura Jeffcoat. And that's why I feel so, so privileged to have her with us because to me, we got the heart of language lab and that's the important thing uh, that we got all of her creativity, her great imagination, her, she built this whole city that you're going to look at today. Many of you have seen it already, but just, I mean, I just fell in love with it. I just love it. I don't know what I'd do if it went away. I, I feel so depressed. So I just absolutely, and we all just absolutely adore this little tiny town. So that's why we thought we would, you know, take you on a little tour and just give you some tidbits of what, um, you know, what we've learned and what we know. And um, just to finish off the history with Language Lab, though, uh, basically this school you see here is a de facto school because um, Language Lab at one point decided that they were going to go corporate and they got real high and mighty and they were going to go for the big contracts. So they just kind of dumped their individual subscriptions and just to them it was just a subscription, you know, and to the students it was like people and to us it was like people. and these people had known each other for years. They'd been coming there for years. And, you know, that one unique thing about virtual worlds is you forget you're in them after a while. You really feel like you're sitting there with your friends. And so they were absolutely brokenhearted. And we said, what can we do for them? And so Laura said, well, I have a little building. We can go over there and hold some classes. And so we did, and that went on and on and on. And then finally we said, well, let's get a little island. I mean, I think we can do this. And so that's really how Learn It Town came to be. Anna, do you have anything to add to that? Now that was, it's, I was, I remember the when they announced that they were closing basically the doors of the academy. I remember all the students came, um, coming to the welcome area and saying that they were so sad. What we're going to do that can be possible? I feel so sad too because it's like you say, it's not that you just um, you just sit down in the in the computer and you meet your friends. It's like you create a, a new family because the the students and the teachers. They all became my family, and I really wanted to be here with all. I mean, with all of them. And when I knew that they were closing the door, it was like, no way. I mean, what 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 are we going to do? I'm going to miss my friends. I'm going to miss my family, and it was really hard to go through that. Can I say something about that? Sure. I think that has to do with building a community. That all schools have pride. You know, and if you're one of the things about being an ESL school or being an online school is that you have to create a sense of community with each other. You have to have a reason for them going because they're not just going to log on. If you look at game design and the theory of game design, what do people, what, what is the payoff? And for many things, you know, you have a game and you can win a chair or a piece of clothing or something like that. But in this kind of world, you actually win a friend, a person from the other part of the world, a person that you would never, ever meet in your life. That's a bigger payoff than anything else. Uh, so when they did away with that, um, which was a very, uh, it was, well, it just basically destroyed uh, what they were doing. Um, it was a very bad mistake. It was, it was, it was, it was uh, uh, that. So the students came on. And so then when they tried to hold it with, it was just corporate where, and, and a lot of you have seen this, where you just log in, you take your class. It's like a web online class. And uh, 
you really just, you know, you don't really see anybody. You just do your work online and then you go, there's, there's not any intimacy. There's, there's not any, um, uh, any way that you really want to be a part of that. And so you just do your course online and then you go away. Uh, this is much different. This is, this is something that lasts not just for a short time, but for, for, uh, for many of them, I've, we've had people for six, seven years. So uh, they, it, it becomes the community that they are a part of. They only get to speak English in this community. They only get to learn math in say this way, or they would only get to learn uh, uh, reading or, or talking about books or whatever. So you, it's your job to, when you're talking about payoffs for, uh, for game theory or uh, learning theory, uh, it, it, this is part of the payoff is people. And never forget that the people are the most important thing that you are giving to each other. So encourage that. Encourage those relationships. Okay, that's all. I have okay, to that's say. all she has energy for. <laughs> but I know you get excited when you're listening. Which is good. It's good for your immune system. Okay, so yeah, one of the things we really thought of when we thought of what we wanted to do is we wanted a synchronous school. We wanted to interact with our students. That's what we love to do. We didn't want to sit around and design materials and post them and have people come along and play the game and you know with their friends and all that. We wanted to have a real sense of doing what we love to do, which is teaching and interacting with students. So that's that was our dream. That's what we wanted to do when we got up in the morning. So um, we just figured that let's really go for a synchronous school. And then we realized that people really are hungry for that synchronous school again, that synchronous in interaction. So that's really, um, I think it's going to grow. And then when people, you know, study with us and they try to go off and do Skype lessons and other ways of learning, they just come back with, they say they, they just can't go back. I can't go back and I won't. So anyway, okay, so that's our little history and how we became a de facto school. So why don't we do this? Um, let's go stand around the holodeck and then we'll tell you a few more things about us, but we'll also show you some things because we, thought, we don't, we don't want to just lecture to you and then take a long tour and then drag you off to, you know, you'll be so tired. Learn okay. <laughs> Learning yeah. how to do it. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so can you guys um, lead over to the whole deck? That way I can film. Okay, let me see exactly. Do, 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 do. I'll follow Tito one. No, wait a minute. I'm trying to see where the whole deck is right now. Okay, there you go. We have to jump a little bit. Jump. <laughs> there you go. Off to the holodeck. Huh. Ooh. Okay. Okay, so uh, everybody goes around the holodeck because we don't want to activate it and so that way you all nobody stays away. Okay, yeah. So we want to kind of come in close. We'll just kind of stand oh, I have a feeling it. that we're going to sing or something because we're in a Yeah. Ah, no, no. Uh, okay. <laughs> now, this isn't new to a lot of people, but we like to get this on film because um, this is something we use. This platform is really, really good for students who have low bandwidth because there's not much going on here at one time. And then I can actually seat them in a holodeck and they don't have to move. And then we can have a lesson in a holodeck and it, they don't have to, you know, because sometimes they freeze and it's just, they just aren't good at moving around. And so I figured, well, I don't want to lock them out. How can I make it exciting for them? So, um, some of the things we can do, for example, is when we have a history lesson, we might want to go into uh, a tomb. And mm -hmm. that's one of my favorites because I think, what? 
gosh, you could build so much around this tomb. And I like it comes with little sound effects and everything, and we can write a crazy story, and we can also teach something very real. We can teach real stories in history. So I know it's probably not new for a lot of you, but it's, so to me, a real solution for students when they can't move around and do a lot of the gymnastics that other people can do. Okay. So then the other one, which everyone I'm sure has seen, End simulation. Um, is, and I use this one a lot. Um, what's that? I don't use that one a lot. That was wrong. Wrong! End simulation. <laughs> <laughs> Oops, there go the chairs. <laughs> okay, or did they leave them behind? <laughs> yeah, don't worry, it will go away. Yeah, they will. Okay, let's see. Where they just have a longer delete. <laughs> okay, here we go. I have to be very careful. There you go. Ooh. So, I don't know. I really like the fact you can and go hang president. out in the Oval Office. Yeah, and pretend to be the president. We do lots of role play. <laughs> and so we can have a real we... problem here. You know, we can have a real problem to solve in this room with a class full of students, and we can give them different roles. And we really love role playing, and then we particularly love um, filming our role plays. Especially from different cultures, because they do have such different politics. And it, it really brings us all together and, and makes it like one world. It's a very small world when right. we're all together. And we have people from Kazakhstan and, and South Korea and China and uh, Netherlands and uh, South America. It's just very, it's so much fun. Especially when you have the Turks. We had the Turks. Oh, my gosh. They're so vocal. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I was scared. Right after we talked, they had this big uprising. I was like, oh, I hope this were none of our guys. Because they are. So, yeah. so anyway, careful. we really, um, we try to keep this, what we do small. And we really do feel this year something's going to happen in VR. It just feels like we're getting so many more inquiries. So many more things are happening. So the conversation's changing a little bit. And um, we really are happy that we were sort of automatically following the concept of the Lean Start move, Startup Movement. And Anna, can you explain a little bit about how uh, what the Lean Startup is about? Uh, well, basically, Lean, Start, Lean Startup is so basic. And what it says basically is like before you launch anything, before you launch any product and invest a lot of money in doing that, you need to build a uh, minimum viable product and you need to do that after you do a lot of interviews with people going outside of the box or outside of the office asking people doing tests uh, working on hypothesis and once you validate all of that then you do the, the minimum viable and uh, you test that product and if it works then you can start building and investing money but until you have uh, test that and know for real that it's going to work, then it's unnecessary to invest money and lots of time. So basically, it's just meet with people and potential clients and also change direction on what you're doing. Because sometimes, just because you love so much your idea, because you feel that much passion for your idea, you think that it's going to be... Uh, a million idea and everybody's going to buy it and you're going to be a millionaire but when you go outside and you ask the people and you ask the real or potential client uh, you realize that it's not what they want or not exactly how you want them to to want it so it's when you have to pivot I think it's the name you have to change the direction and modify your product before it goes um, on, on sale, basically. The good thing that I found out in Project to them is that uh, all the girls that were there, they had to do all these steps. But we basically have done every single step. So I was really so happy that we were doing it everything without knowing that Lean Startup um, 
philosophy and we did it right away we did every every step and we were doing it perfectly and i did the interviews also <clears throat> because i had it to i had to do that exactly to show the statistics and and we were practically i mean my idea or our idea is what they wanted but people is not really still not um, ready for virtual reality, but they are getting close every time. So we And I'm afraid that the, the Oculus Rift has bypassed, this, they've missed a step, and I think that that's why it might not work out so well for them, because they're overhyped and they're not ready. So yeah. that's what people think they're doing, but I want them to come to the middle step, and we are the middle step, so they exactly. really need to... Yeah, I mean, we're viable right now. We don't have to change the size. People aren't getting sick, you know, so it's mm -hmm. going to be good. Okay, I'm going to show you two more, and they're my favorites, and you probably know them, the pizzeria, which is so authentic. When you look around it, it's just one of those amazing places. Let me see if I can find it. Oh, here we go, 37. And my students, we've done had so much fun in here. Ooh, I love that. Yeah, you notice the crowd talking in the background. and We <laughs> give them problems to solve. We have problem customers and people who find flies in their soup and things like that. So we have had a lot of fun playing in here and being the waiter and the waitress and you know, solving these problems. So it's so authentic and it's so easy to do. And you can put those low bandwidth students seated around these tables and they don't have to do anything really um, because, and that way, like some of our Vietnamese students, they can just sit there and their sound is good, but they can't move at all. They can't do anything. So this is a really good solution for those students who are low bandwidth, put it up on a, a platform where there's not much going on, and then use Holodex for that. Okay, and my last and most favorite one... <laughs> End simulation. ...is the Copper Canyon. And this one, to me has so many possibilities for games and treasure hunts and, um, you know, dangerous escapes. And, yeah, it's really great. Really great. So that's pretty much all we have to say about the holodex. So what we can do is we can go down below and start our tour. We're going to do a walking tour of a few locations. So um, let's turn off this simulation. And I want to make sure everyone got the landmarks. Now, did everyone get the landmarks? Did you click on the blue ball on the stage? And if not, I can just copy and paste. And yeah. Just in case. Because we're going to go to the library. Okay, let's walk back over there, and we can start there. Where am I? I cannot see where I am. Okay, let's okay, walk back let's over there, there and touch the blue ball. Sorry, sorry. We're going to do a lot of walking today, so you'll get a lot of exercise. <laughs> I wish they can burn your fat. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> <That'd be great. laughs> I will be running here. Okay. So if we click on the ball, we'll get all the landmarks in case you get lost or if you want to come back. Okay, and we're trying to move not so fast so that the people who are filming um, will not have such a hard time. So we're just going to go someplace and kind of 
stay there and talk for a little while and adjust to it, and then we'll go to the next place. Okay, so what's the first thing on our list? Library. Okay, let's go down to the oh, library. amazing library. Okay. Okay, let me get my... Just making sure okay. everybody goes. If not, I'm just... Okay, you stay behind. Paste these. You can click and then click teleport. Let me do it again. Okay, Peonia and Nelly. Let's click here and then click teleport so we can go to library. Let me see. We can go there. I can give you this, and I can give you this. Just click there and click teleport. Um, she was in Yemen, and she used all the bypasses to get into uh, Second Life and to come and work with us and learn with us. And we tended to westernize her a little bit too much, forgetting that she was in Yemen. So she was with those that burned their burqa, and they planted a bomb outside of her home, uh, the dorm where they were at. And she, her burqa did catch it with the uh, cloth and... Uh, it did go off and um, blinded her in one eye. And so we need to make sure, remember, it is very serious to remember that where you are located is not where they are located. The library, as you know, is, is, a, is an I place of ideas. It's a place of thinking. And so you really want to be very careful and know who you are, who you're bringing into the library and make sure that you are, are careful with, with what they are reading. Um, that's the best thing to do. So it's very, very important. But look around, click on things you can see. Yes, we're Such currently working. trivia. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I love that. Sorry. Yeah. So, should we go next door? Walk over to the hacienda? Oh, yeah. We can okay. go there. Okay, so this is walking. We're doing a walking tour today. Yes. I can show you the kitchen, and I can cook something for you. Yes. Because yes, maybe walking makes you Anna hungry. cook something. <laughs> Anna's going to cook something. <laughs>
Well, since no one's talking, I'll do the talking. No one's hearing me, but... I see someone just wrote me a note in Spanish. Is this a Spanish lesson? the camera here so I can uh, get some viewing. All right, everybody's sitting at the table eating, so this is like really a nice big family. I don't know if anyone's talking, it doesn't seem anyone is. But uh, there you can see things are happening around the table. Great way to keep a diet, you don't really have to eat anything. Eh? And now people are going somewhere else. I think I'm getting the idea. Where else should I go now? Let me just step over the table and go through there. I don't know. Let me just move around. You know what? Um, let me just go through here. Maybe I'll just sit down. Oh, there's Fiona. Let me just go through the table. There we go. She disappeared on me. Okay. That seems to be a window. We don't want to go through the window, do we? Okay. Where is everybody? All right. So let's go through the rooms. That's the house, I guess. Uh, and there we are. There's the fridge. I wonder how you get out of this house. Okay. All right. So I think that um, I got the idea. I could go into the fridge. <laughs> All right. Oh, there's someone that's lost too. I wonder where she's going. Let me just follow her. Follow the yellow brick road. That seems to be a door there. Let's see where it takes me. All right, so let's go through the door. Could be a window. That's all oh, it opened. How about that? All right, so uh, let's go over here. Uh, there's a patio. We could just uh, jump over and see where that takes us. There we go. All right. So there, we're just going to explore this um, area. Maybe we should get the bike. That looks something interesting that I might want to do. Let's touch it. Maybe I'll be able to sit on it. And I've always wanted to ride a bike. Whoops, it's not going anywhere. So I guess that's not a good idea. Let's stand up. All right, so um, we'll just walk around and explore the town. Oh, look. Maybe I can uh, sit on this. Ooh, that looks exciting. Let's see if that works. If I touch it or if I sit on it. Do you think I could? Oh, there. How about that? Whee! Oh, I love this. All right. So there I go. Whoa, look at that. Wow, that's cute. Now, I could stay here forever. 
Oh my gosh, that is so relaxing. Oh my gosh. That is absolutely amazing. Look, there are two swings. Okay, so let's get off the swing. There we go. And uh, let's see if we can do some more exploration here. This is a lot of fun. Look at that street. I can walk in the middle of the street. I hope no cars are going to come by. Looks like a lot of fun. There's some people here. I wonder if there's a conversation going on. Let's go in and see what's going on. Any voices? Anyone talking? Don't hear anything. All right. So um, let's go. Where's everybody going? Don't hear anything. All right, let's follow her. Let's go. Yeah. All right, so um, there we are. We're, we're going. Whoops. I think I got kind of stuck. Whee! All right, so let's go. I think I hear animals. Let's see what I hear there. It looks maybe it's uh let's go in and see what's going on here. Looks like a pet shop. Oh, you can go shopping. How about that? Oh, it isn't a pet shop. It's a supermarket. Maybe I get some water. I'm thirsty. Get something to drink here. Uh, object. It's not giving me anything. So I guess I have to get a shopping cart in order to do any shopping. Maybe I can make those things fall. What is that? No, I don't want to do that. Well, it looks like everybody's going. All right, so I'm gonna go too. Whee! Fiona. Hello. Where's everybody going? I must be going kind of drunk. I got in a red light. Should I take the swing again? Let me go on that swing again. I love swinging. There. Sit. Oh, I just love that. Whee! There I go again. So relaxing. I could stay here for a whole day.
L A L A. Say L A to adjust your position. Touch me to change. L A. That's weird. All right, so let's find out where everybody else is. All right, so this is going to be a really long video, but okay, I think I got the idea. And I think what's most um, important is that you got the idea. Do you think I should go in the water? Oh, I wonder where everybody is, but I would like to take this. I wish I knew how. Touch. That was yellow. 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 I wonder what this means. There, I got another one. It's unlocked. So let's ride. <laughs> I'm riding a bike. Can you believe that? Bike doesn't go. Doesn't want to go the other way, it just goes one way. Come on, change direction. Well, I guess it's not changing direction because I'm not going the right way. Alright, so let's get off the bike. Stand up. Okay, so I got off the bike. Whee! So that was a lot of fun, riding the bike. Okay, what else can I do here besides ride a bike? I don't want to go in the water. Whee! Alright, so... I rode a bike. Let's see what else I can do here. Let's see what I can do. Oh, there's a movie. Maybe I should go to a movie. But I, I want to do stuff. Let's see if there's a car I can ride. That bike was fun. I wonder if there's a boat or something I can ride. Eee, let's see. I'd like to go on the water, but okay, so let's see what's here. All right, so I'm sitting. Ooh, that's hot. Make the water here. Touch it. What else can I do here? Stand up. Whoa. I wonder if I can eat something. What do you think? Is there something to eat? Is 
very nice. All right, I think um, it's time to go to sleep. Where's the hotel? Let's see, I can have pita. Okay, I'm gonna have French. Well, what should I have? Um, I'll have French toast. What does that mean? Do I get French toast? <laughs> 